Travis, what mile are we at on the PCT <laughs> right now? They haven't even got there yet. <laughs> <laughs> 400 miles to go. He's already uh, in road the pain is, cave. This road is <laughs> crushing me. <laughs> uh, a little motion sickness. Yeah. He's got yeah. the Dramamine. <laughs> Give me a minute. The Oregon Pacific Crest Trail is 453 something miles of uh, trail that runs from the Oregon-California border to the Oregon-Washington border. Existing on it as a through hiker or an ultra runner, you know, you're living in a different state of being and you're basically in control of how far and fast you move. Just throw everything out the window because what you expect is not going to happen. 7-16-2016. All right, guys. 538. All right. Here we are at the border. Let's do it. We, we dreamed this. We did all the preparation. We made all the, we did all the logistics as tough as it is, as you know, we got to realize how good our lives are. Oh yeah, to to be here. Absolutely. Right now, and let's yeah. go out there and have fun, do what we love, and see the beautiful state of Oregon on foot. Yep. Yep. And uh, break the fastest known time. Yeah. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, and go. The first day was, was pretty easy to just kind of keep moving and, and stay on task. It was just a matter of like, let's just go and talk and we point and we look at stuff and, and, and really, you know, have a good time out there uh, as much as we could while still, you know, continuing to move forward. So it really never felt like an overwhelming kind of kind of day on that first day. Working together well, met a lot of through hikers out there coming from all over the world, which was cool. Cold, freeze-dried chicken teriyaki with rice and peas. Been letting that shake in my bag for about 11 miles. Based off the way that I started, throwing up out of the back seat of a car, uh, <laughs> things a lot improved. Better, quite a, a lot bit. better off than that, so I could only go up from there. <laughs> so far, so good. Thanks for adjusting. We messed up our math. We were off by 10 miles somehow. There was a discrepancy in the, the mileage. So we would have had to go 70 miles on our day one, which was way more than we want to do out of the gate. So we adjusted and we'll, we'll have to adjust the, the, the other days a little bit. From here on out, it's pretty, uh, we're pretty isolated. We're not going to see crew much uh, other than on each end. So yeah, we're just going to have to be safe and work together and on to day two. Oh, yes, nice job yeah, today, man. Too, man. <laughs> nice oh. job. The, the 
grandfather's talking to his grandson, and he says that inside of every person there's two wolves that are in constant opposition of each other. One's the good wolf. It's like positivity, compassion, love, you know, all that good stuff. The other one is like anger and negativity and resentment and all that stuff. And <clears throat> the little boy said, well, which one wins? He said, the one that you feed. So every day you can choose, you know, you're gonna feed the good wolf or focus on the negative, like this endurance sports or this adventure. It's gonna be longer than we expected. It's gonna be challenging. It's gonna be grueling. We would start off each day with, you know, this gung-ho attitude, like, we got this, we got this, we got to believe, we can do this. And we would start off for several hours and then we would just be hit with another slap in the face. We had hundreds of downed trees which slowed us down by six or seven hours. And then there were, there were mosquitoes and that were just the worst I've ever seen. Do the ski to dance, do the ski to dance. Good motivation to keep not stop keeping my skin covered. I don't seem to be biting me through this jacket. For some reason, I think I might have overhydrated and stopped absorbing food properly. And um, that lasted for about eight to 10 hours. You know, Travis was definitely the strong link and uh, got me through that difficult patch. I was trying to be smart, because I knew one of the things we couldn't do was have all three of us busted up at once. So I was just doing what I could to shove in caffeine and stay alert and, and keep going. No! <laughs> Going for 50k like today, like and like we're all in good spirits. Like got an amazing crew like that got us. So like that snow last night. Yeah. Like, Refueled. <laughs> Taped us all up. Took care of our feet. Nice good to go. Now we got to go view Crater Lake. Yeah, man. First view Crater Lake. Crater Travis's Lake. first time. Yeah. In the daytime. Yeah. So Crater Lake was was something that would been on my bucket list to go see since I since I moved out here, and. I purposely pushed off going to it because this was the kind of mode of transportation I wanted to start in the, you know, on the California Oregon border and make my way up to it. So that was, you know, that when we got there, that was like a huge milestone for me was that we traveled this entire distance on foot and now I get to see Crater Lake for the first time. And man, it was incredible. Um, I'm still thinking about it today. I mean, it's so blue, it was so big. It's hard to even take it all in. Um, it's such a, 
I mean, no, I don't even have words to describe it. It's, it's just such an amazing experience to see this mountain basically that flipped upside down. And I mean, it's, it's the bluest blue water you've ever seen. It looks fake. Even looking back at the pictures that I have now, it, it's kind of hard to believe that it looked like uh, what it looked like. Get that on video? I did! <laughs> 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 This is awesome. This is uh, half baked. It's a little Ben and Jerry's action. I'd literally eat anything right now. We had a tough, tougher than we thought, 40 mile section. And uh, somewhere along the way, I don't know, I, I don't even know exactly what happened. I sort of had a pinching feeling on the top of my foot, my left foot. Um, and I was like, oh man, that's bothersome. So I kind of loosened up my shoes. Uh, and then my foot sort of began to swell and fill up the half size larger shoes that I was wearing. Um, and it just progressively got worse. Uh, so that tendon that sits on the top of your foot is swollen and irritated and I couldn't do a 20 minute mile on flat ground last night so given that um, and since it's three of us and I'm trying to go for time I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to throw in the towel. done a great job with my feet really that's been probably about the only thing that's kept me in this because there's been a you know a decent amount of pain there so getting them taped up and uh, we'll be ready to go today 
Thanks for all your help. Mm. Couldn't have done it without you. Today's a make or break day if we're gonna hit the FKT. 75 mile push, so. All right guys, we're all right, buddy. Buddy. All right. Moving into McKenzie Pass after a 76 mile day just about crushed us. I got up there like a blubbering mess and you know I saw my family and I just broke down crying. It was such a, a spiritual uplift to see them and to, just to give them a big hug and kiss. I was just like, man, this is so much harder than I thought it was going to be. Well, you're going to have to work some magic. Oh, I'm going to. I'm telling you right now, you're going to be working some serious business here with some serious business magic. So you guys get your food down, and then you're going to sleep. This is it. This is your spot. I was at this point where I can't imagine stopping, and I can't imagine going forward. And it's just you and that voice in your head battling it out. and. You know, it's one thing I've noticed in all this stuff is that your mind is an amazingly powerful tool. We got them in the tent and they just looked so bad, I just lost it. I just, I just started crying. It was just a lot emotionally to, to take on, right? To see these, these guys, these friends of mine, right? In just such, such pain, you know, and, and, and they were suffering, they were suffering. I was definitely feeling like I didn't know if we were doing the right thing out there. You know, it was a, enough by seeing my daughter, my wife, and my son with a two hour turnaround there to just keep going. We were working our asses off to get like a 20 minute per mile pace. So when you start doing the math and you've got four miles to go in normal everyday life, you're like, oh, four miles, I'm almost done. When you multiply that by 20 minutes per mile, you're gonna be out there for at least another a couple hours, okay? And that, at the end of the day, is just this draining, just never-ending mind game. When you're, when you're navigating this type of, of terrain and with this sort of sleep deprivation and extreme fatigue, it was just this, oh God, it was just this twilight zone. You quickly lose track of the day. Day becomes night, night becomes day. Everything takes longer than expected and you become very disconnected from the world, kind of lost in this space where you're just continuing to take one step at a time. We had to get in and get these guys, and it took close to an hour to go six and a half miles. I thought it would be funny if we just got in our underwear and waited for, uh, for everybody to show up. So we're all super excited and like giddy and giggling about it. And they came in and they didn't even notice. I mean, so it was funny for us, it was uplifting. Yasin just walked up to me, hugged me, like, hey man, it's so glad you're up here. 
as an underwear and a stocking cap, right? And he did not even flinch at it. Um, I think after about 15 minutes, Scott finally was like, is this like the underwear show or what? Yeah, yeah we just trying to, like, like, we just thought it might dance? be fun to give you a little different scenery. Oh, yeah. That was about as good as it got <laughs> for that one. It was super worth it though, I think for, for the crew, cause we just, we needed an outlet. It was, like I said, these guys look so bad. We just kind of needed a little something to kind of lighten the mood a little bit. And, uh, Hopefully it's something that they kind of look back on and it kind of flashes in their head that, that you know, because we were literally in the middle of nowhere, just like four dudes in a camp spot making food uh, in their underwear. Travis, having been injured on day four, um, really showed some character that is very rare. He shifted gears immediately. His presence there and his knowledge and experience of this kind of stuff was paramount in us being successful and getting from point A to point B in one piece. Everywhere I looked in the woods, I was seeing things. My brain was formulating things that weren't there. It was one of those telltale signs that our electrolytes were off, we were depleted, we were sleep deprived. So it was a little, it was a little dangerous at times too. Uh, Stephen and I went five miles in to the PCT and found uh, Yasin and Scott. Uh, they said that you know they were pretty low, and it, we we got to them I think at the right time. And uh, the unbelievable experience uh, being with two guys um, who have gone through uh, so much and been on their feet for so long and sleep deprived. And hopefully they can get some more rest and uh, get back after it tomorrow. thrash and uh, we're having to make an adjustment on our record attempt. Uh, we're going to shift our attempt to break the supported record, which I think is very doable. Uh, and that record is eight days and 19 hours. So It really became the answer to all of our problems was just accepting things. It's like we had to accept Travis couldn't go on. We accepted the fact that he was helping us now and he was like the crew chief, that he was the glue that was holding together our entire trip. We had to accept that we weren't gonna get Brian's record. We had to accept that we might not even get the supported record. <laughs> but in the end, it was that acceptance of everything that just gave us that peace of just, you know, just keep going. Absolutely beautiful. I would see these guys come in every day and I would see how broke down they were and I'd see how bad they looked and I wanted I wanted to be that, right? I wanted that to be me. No matter how bad they looked, no matter how much pain they were in, I was I was oddly jealous that that was not the position that I was in. Scott's brother Devin, an absolute riot, a hoot, and he brought so many laughs. I mean, <laughs> even just thinking about him while we were out on the trail made us laugh. Okay, and he's, you know, he's, he's making breakfast, he's 
taping feet up, and he's got Michael Bolton like blaring on the radio. <laughs> Very tired, very sore, ready to get this thing done. See you at the Bridge of the Gods. I discovered that this project was far bigger than just me and that in order to validate this we had to get a runner or two runners or three runners to the finish line so despite the pain despite our struggles that's really what pushed me to the bridge of the gods After spending, you know, by my calculations, 143 hours on a trail within a week, um, the respect, the love, the compassion that I have for those fellas is something that I think will last for a lifetime. Definitely the hardest thing I've ever done. couldn't believe that we had done what we had done and we were there self-propelled. I felt this, just this feeling of accomplishment and satisfaction of getting redemption on something that I hadn't finished and I just, I couldn't believe it. In that second, it, it, in that moment, it felt like those long drawn out days went by like that. I think it's important to remember those things when you're out there and it seems like it's never going to end, that all of this stuff's going to be over in a blink of an eye. I mean, our lives are going to be over in a blink of an eye. And just getting through those tough moments and coming out the other side is hugely rewarding. <laughs>